It's kind of what we're taught not to do. You know, when you're mountain flying, you're taught not to be flying in these areas. When we go into each lake, everything has to be just in line for that to happen. Get a certain altitude and a certain airspeed at a certain point. The further along that you go into the Cirque and the closer that you get to that lake, the less options you have. As a pilot flying in the backcountry, you don't give away your options. We have four planes and four pilots in Colorado. Each pilot has their own plane, and they're stationed out of that area. I fly a Cessna 185, and we use that as a platform to uh, observe, count, track, transplant wildlife. We also stock high alpine lakes. The fish drops are one of the more high-risk operations that we have. We actually fly into the Cirque, into the High Alpine, and then drop those fish over the lake at about 150, 200 feet. You're always sort of thinking about what if something happens next? And if I lose an engine, where am I gonna go at that point? There's a physiological drain to it, there's a mental drain to it, and in the industry, they don't teach you how to stay fit for that. When I first started working in Alaska, I had all the comments. Oh, you must be the flight attendant. Where's the captain? Or you look just as young as my daughter. Are you strong enough to handle the airplane? Just all these things that sort of put you in that box. It was challenging in the beginning, but I was also myself going through challenging things too. So I think being a woman in a male-dominated field really wasn't the hardest thing that I had to deal with. So I used to tell people that I started flying because I took a lesson when I was 17 or 18, and I got hooked. And I just couldn't stop thinking about it. And it was actually a lie. <laughs> um, I actually started thinking about flying when I was eight. We didn't have much growing up, you know, so nature was my playground. It was my solace. We also moved around so much and it was the only thing constant. And we were actually homeless for a couple months. <laughs> and like, that, was, that experience would have been completely different if I was on the streets, but I wasn't. I was like surrounded by trees and water so very early on, that, that was home. Like, that's where I went to heal. I have a history of abuse, and it started when I was eight years old. I had three different people throughout my childhood um, abuse me. The hardest thing was that it wasn't talked about ever again. So for me, dealing with that was dissociation. And I would fantasize I was fine. You know, they say you fight, you fight or you freeze. 
while I was in those traumatic experiences, I froze. But sort of my alter ego was strong enough to fly away. And I chased that my whole life to get to that point where I could. And so that's why I learned how to fly. When you don't have a strong foundation, you're less apt to sort of just dive into things. You kind of like dip your toe in and come out, right? And for me, a lot of it was financial. I didn't have the money. And so I would save the money and I would start flight training and not have money anymore. And then I would save up money and then I would start flight training and the flight school closed. And so all my money went along with that flight school. I was waiting tables and I used to actually go into hotels and I would make sandwiches and eat their cereal and pretend like I was staying there and like go back to my van. Oh, that was just such a huge feeling of failure for me. Here I was, back to being homeless, but I was so determined, I couldn't take another break. It really was like this fail, try again, fail, try again, fail, try again. I put up this United States map and I just put a pin like everywhere a flight school was. And every day I would pull a pen and I would just narrow it and narrow it and narrow it and narrow it. There really is this sort of sole ownership of your health as a pilot. And I really don't think that you're physically fit unless you're mentally fit. A lot of pilots are afraid to talk openly about their mental health. That fear of, if I ask for help, there's that stigma. I think my past made me stronger in the cockpit 
learning how to manage that stress. When I started flight training, I realized pretty quickly that I had unresolved things from my past. There was no way that I could have showed up for work and gotten to an airplane if I didn't heal that part of myself. I realized healthy ways to get through those dark moments, and that is by far asking for help. That's when I feel like I was making moves in the right direction. Something's shifting here, something's moving. Honestly, like, learning how to fly was easy. Learning to heal so that I could be the person that I wanted to be was way harder. It took me longer to get those tools than it did to get my licenses. It is a lifelong journey and it's something that, you know, you still chip at. Flying saved me from my traumatic childhood, but it also forced me to heal from it. I'm more proud of that accomplishment than everything that I've done flying. Thank you.